Alright guys, so today we're going to install the OpenWRT Web UI onto our Phantom 2 Vision Plus, both the repeater and the quadcopter itself. That's going to give us a lot easier control over lots of settings for the Wi-Fi and uh, yeah, basically the Wi-Fi is really the only thing I recommend adjusting in there. Uh, you can also set the root password and a couple other things, but uh, we're going to just stick with Wi-Fi stuff for now. So first thing to do is uh, make sure that your computer has two internet connections. Uh, one that is connected to your drone and one that is connected to your wired connection so that you actually have internet access with your laptop or computer, whatever it is. Next thing we're going to do is uh, launch putty and we're going to connect into the repeater first now keep in mind that SSH has the ability to verify basically a, a signed key matches what it's seen previously for a specific host in this instance since it's the first time we're connecting you'll see this putty security alert uh, and it talks about the host keys not cached uh, no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is this is completely acceptable for this one because this is the first time we're connecting. So go ahead and hit yes to save the key so that we don't get prompted by that anymore. Now we're going to log in as root and the password 19881209. And here we're logged into our phantom. I'm going to make this a little bigger and I'm going to go off script a little bit from what I posted in the forums. Uh, because I want to show you some some quick commands that you can run and see what's going on um, the first command that has to do with what we're doing is the net stack command and we're actually gonna have it uh, give it a few options here so dash P uh, tells us the program name dash L or the L option in here says that uh, we want to see the ports that are listening and dash n says, just show me the number values. Don't try to resolve the IP address to a host name because it wouldn't work anyway. It's just gonna waste time. So we hit enter on that. And this right here is what we have to free up before we can uh, actually get our connection out to the OpenWRT download site, uh, which we're gonna be doing here in just a minute. So the first thing we've gotta do is to stop this program and that's just light uh, light HTTPD or light HTTPD um, and the way we can do that is forward slash etc forward slash init dot d forward slash light tpd stop now if we rerun our command netstat dash pln we'll see there is nothing on port 80 anymore the light HTTP daemon stopped, we're good to go there. The next thing we have to do is we have to be able to override the uh, repeater's own inherent desire to go out to a DNS server and get the IP address of the OpenWRT download site. The reason we're having to do that is because the repeater doesn't have a direct connection out to the internet. Uh, we're going to be letting it piggyback off of our computer's connection to the internet that we have plugged into the wire. So the next thing we have to do is tell it or override the DNS entry for downloads.openwrt.org and this 127.0.0.1 that's the IP address for local host. Um, so it's going to tell it's going to override DNS and tell this repeater that the IP address for downloads.openwrt.org is the local host. So any connection that tries to go out is actually going to try to connect back to itself and we're going to forward port 80 so that it actually directs it back out through this SSH session. So it's a little bit of magic that SSH is good for. So we're going to echo that which um, I can show you what it does without anything. It just outputs that line and we're going to redirect that line into the Etsy hosts file. 
So now if we cat Etsy hosts, we'll see there's the default local host, which is always going to be there. Don't delete that. And then our new entry for downloads.openwrt.org. All right. So now that we've got the port freed from up here, we've got the entry in our host file. Now we're actually going to tell SSH to push that port through the SSH tunnel and out to the real openwrt.org. So let me do that a little slower actually. So I right click here on the title bar anywhere, hit change settings. Then come down to the SSH section or under connection, hit the plus sign, click on tunnels for the source port. I'm going to enter port 80. For the destination, we're going to downloads.openwrt.org colon 80. Um, port 80 is the default port for HTTP traffic. Uh, PuTTY and SSH in general requires both the source and destination port to be explicitly specified. So we have to enter that there even though it's just going to the default web port. Also, we want this to be a remote port forward. So we're forwarding from the remote end, which is the repeater, through SSH and then out to the internet to this downloads.openwrt.org. Now, one big thing, don't forget to hit the add button because if you don't, it won't put it up here. And when you click apply, it's not gonna do anything. But now we've done that, we've clicked add, we've clicked apply. Now if we do our netstack command again, we will see port 80 is listening on 127.0.0.1. And DropBear is the program that's listening to it. DropBear is a, a lightweight SSH server. So we just created that port forward. So now what you can do is uh, the OPKG commands just like any other OpenWRT router would be able to do. So OPKG update and it's downloading the list of packages. Okay, so it's got all that. And the first thing, if you just try to do OPKG install Lucy, which is the web UI, you'll see that we're going to get an error. And it's going to tell us that uh, a package firewall that's required for Lucy com conflicts with an already installed version of the firewall. And we'll get that here in just a second. Yep, there we go. So here you can see uh, configuration file, just that's fine, we're not worried about that. Uh, check data file clashes, package firewall wants to install SBIN FW3 but that file is already provided by a package called firewall three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove firewall three. Whoops, OPKG remove firewall three. I forgot to tell it what I wanted to do. Okay, so that's gone. It did not delete the actual firewall configuration. No big deal. And now we're gonna go do OPKG install Lucy. And this is going to go through, grab the packages for the Lucy web UI, and you'll see it configured a few things, configuring Lucy, and now Lucy is installed. Uh, so now we want to make sure that the uh, light HTTP daemon does not start back up because it's going to take port 80, and we want Lucy to be able to run on port 80, which actually uses a different web server. So etsy init.d lightcpd disable. And then we're going to enable the one for Lucy, which is uhttpd enable. Then we're going to start it. uhttpd start. After a few seconds. Oh, no. Okay. So this is a common problem. We already said earlier that our drop bear server is listening on port 80. Well, so nothing else can bind to it, which is why when we tried to start HTTPD up here, it said, no, oh, the address is already in use, no sockets bound, unable to continue. So now we're gonna go back into right clicking on the, the status bar or the title bar 
go to change settings, go down to SSH, tunnels. We're going to click on this one to highlight it. Then we're going to click remove. So now there's no forwarded ports listed here. We're going to click apply. Now, if we do our net stat again, oh crap, look at that. Drop bear is still listening on port 80, even though we tore down that, um, that port forward. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect by typing exit, and then we're going to reconnect. And just like before, except notice we did not get that security warning because we saved that SSH key. So we're going to log in as root 19881209. And now if we do, let me actually make this bigger, dash PLN. We'll notice there's no port 80 listening anywhere there. And so the port, this is the local address that it's listening on. All zeros means it's listening on every IP, um, both the local host IP 127001 and also the public IP or the, you know, the internal IP address, which we've been connecting to the whole time, 192.168.1.2. Anything after the colon is the port number that it's listening on. So port 53, that's DNS, port 22, that's SSH. Uh, all these other ports are non-standard and you'll see most of them are used by uh, program serial to network, uh, which allows forwarding serial communication over a TCP IP connection. We won't get into that here, but that's a lot of the way that uh, the I iOS and Android application talk to the Phantom and uh, get status and GPS uh, coordinates and direction and all that kind of good stuff. So now we we have port 80 open. Now we're going to be able to go ahead and start UHTPD. And there we go. So no error that time. We're going to rerun our net stack command. And here we go. This line is now present. UHTPD is listening on all IP addresses. Port 80. So now if we bring up Chrome or Firefox or whatever, 192.168.1.2 and hit enter. You'll see this screen for a second, then it'll redirect and you're going to log in with root and the same root password, 19, 19881209. Hit log in. And after a few seconds, you're going to see all kinds of good stuff. So now we're, we have a web interface into our repeater. So now we just got to go back and do the same thing on the Phantom. All right, so we're going to minimize that. Uh, we're done with the repeater, so we're going to close that out. Launch Putty again. This time we're going to connect to 192.168.1.1 uh, because that's the Phantom's IP address, the actual uh, wireless uh, bridge device that's built into the Phantom. And we're going to do very much the same thing. Notice you get the security alert for this first time. We're going to say yes. Log in as root. 19881209. And if you cat Etsy hosts, you'll see there's nothing in there. Um, if we do a netstat dash pln you'll see UHTPD is already installed and already listening on port 80. So that's good. That's going to be one less thing that uh, the installer has to do, but we still need to stop that in order to be able to forward the download out over the internet, just like we did on the repeater. So etsy init.d UHTPD stop. And now if we go to our netstack command again, You'll see light HTTPD is listening on port 81. We don't care about that. That's a non-standard implementation. It's not port 80. It's not what we need to use. So we're going to do our echo command 127.0.0.1. Downloads.openwrt.org. Redirect that into the Etsy hosts file. Now, one thing of note, this double arrow is important. The double right arrow or the double greater than sign. That tells the 
redirect to append to the file. If you did it with only one greater than sign, it would actually overwrite the existing contents. So now when we cat the host file, again, we see localhost, which was already there. Now we see downloads.openwrt.org. Right click on the title bar, change settings, expand SSH, go to tunnels, source port, again, port 80, destination, downloads.openwrt.org, colon 80. Again, we have to specify that remote port, colon 80. We're going to tell it it's a remote port forward. Again, don't forget, click add, hit apply. Now, if we do our netstat command, we'll see right here, 127.0.0.1 port 80 is now being listened on by DropBear, which is the SSH server, just like we want. Now we should be able to do opkg update, and it downloads the package file from the download center so it knows what all packages are available. opkg install Lucy. Now, just like before, we're going to get a warning that the firewall uh, utility is uh, going to conflict with installed files. But I just want to show it for the sake of completeness so that the common errors that you'll see if uh, you forget to do some steps. Okay, so there we got the firewall conflict again. OPKG, remove, firewall 3. Now it's gone. Now we're going to install Lucy again. There we go. Lucy is configured. Now we can stat dash pln. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so port 80 still in use by drop bear. And as we saw before, we actually have to fully disconnect in order to free up that port forward. 192.168.1.1. We're reconnecting without the port forwarding. We're going to log in as root. 1988.1209. And make this bigger so that my netstat output looks pretty in a minute. Now if we do netstat-pln, we see there is no port 80 listening. Again, port 81 is there, but we're not worried about that. So now let's start our UHTPD service. And we didn't disable it or anything, so we don't have to do the disable re-enable dance for the uh, Phantom itself. We're going to bring up our web browser, open a new tab here, 192.168.1.1. Again, we're redirecting to Lucy. We're going to log in as root 1988.1209. Now, here we are. So we have both the repeater on .1.2 with a web interface and the phantom itself with the web interface. Stay tuned for another video shortly to show you how to actually enable some encryption on this uh, so that it makes your connection to your repeater and your phantom uh, secure from anyone who might want to try to take over or uh, cause harm to your drone. All right, thanks for watching.